Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A, emails number 54, uh, where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can, usually on this little thing right here. And today is December 24th, so happy holidays to everybody that's going to be celebrating Christmas tomorrow, wherever you are. So let's get right to it. First email is called dot dot dot, which I don't even know if there's a name for that. I think it's pause or something. And it goes a little something like this. Mark, just want to say thank you for your video. It really opened my mind and question a lot of things. Even though I'm not fully flat earth believer, you did got me close to it. Would love to find out the truth just like you. And that's from Yelfri Vasquez. So thank you for that. Awesome. This one's called Praise Him. All right. Hello, Mark. Wanting to reach out to you with a huge thanks for your comprehensive compilation, They Are Hiding God. I wonder if you are still in Boulder. No, I'm not. I've studied this in depth for a long while now and am in complete agreement. It's getting past the collegiate mindset to arrive at truth. Not living in Longmont now, not living, I think. I think he meant now. Now living in Longmont presently, it's wonderful to know a brilliant man lives only 12 miles from home. Well, I used to, and yeah, I know exactly where Longmont is. Bless you. I posted to social media and pray this ultimate correction will be forthcoming and none too soon. It's the most important work. NASA will just have to bear the consequences of their so many evils. Surely you must also know of Stanley Kubrick's parting from life video. This is the time now. God's call to the creature to return to its order, its place, and the purpose for which it was created by God. Thank you for your courage. Truth wins. In the heaven of his will, Diane Peterson. Out of Longmont, apparently. So thank you, Diane, for that. This one's called... What? I'm interested in knowing more. Mark, I just watched the two-hour Reader's Digest video on YouTube and would like to know more. Great eye-opening video and very curious. Thank you and hope you're doing well. That's from Bernard. And uh, what I sent to Bernard was... Because he obviously saw uh, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever or Under the Dome full documentary. And I just, when people ask, say something like that, I just send it to my channel. It's like, hey, did you know I actually have a YouTube channel? It's, it's not one of those two that, that you saw. It's just a, it's a regular old YouTube channel. This next one's called Flat Earth Arborist in New Hampshire. Hi, Mark. I'm newly awake to the flat earth. I'm not very active promoting it due to the fact that most people I've tried to have the conversation with get aggressively negative or just tune me out. I've never experienced such a crappy reaction to an open conversation. Regardless of my general population's opinion, I'm still holding on. I am an arborist by trade and hold a very dear and sacred love for the Earth's trees. Is there any tree info that directly coincides with the flat Earth? Just looking for your conversational info within my language. Keep up the great work, Mark. Kind regards, David. And yeah, you know which one I'm going to send him. I'm going to put this in my respond pile as well. And I'm going to send him No Trees on Flat Earth, that original video. I think he'd probably get a, a big kick out of that, being that he's an arborist. This next one's called Footage. Hi, Mark. How are you keeping? I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. I'm wondering the stunning high altitude balloon footage, which we have all seen well most in Flat Earth Q&A emails 51, which starts around four minutes, 43 seconds. How long is the original footage and does it show the moon at some point also? Cheers, Eric. Uh, Eric, I do not know how long the original footage is and it's not the only one. There's a bunch of videos out there that show that sort of vantage point. That particular one, I don't think shows the moon. Uh, pretty sure. I know it definitely doesn't show it in my version and any other version I've seen. Uh, if it did, we would have all noticed by now. But there are others out there that do show the moon, I think. Pretty sure. Someone should find that out for me. This one's called Hey Mark. 
Mark, I have one hypothesis for you to ponder on. I believe that the Freemasons at the top of the pyramid, 33 degrees, know all too well that the Earth is flat and they continue to this day to keep it a secret. I also think that the all-seeing eye is in some way a nod to the overseer of this planetarium type thing. The hand of God, as you have said. Keep up the great work. Regards, Glenn Bolton in the UK. Very welcome, Glenn in UK. That's what's called survival guide, but it's actually long, which is weird for a survival guide email. It goes, hi, Mark. It's wonderful to see the work that you're doing. I'm totally with you on where you're going. Thank you. At 72, you've managed to add some color to my retirement years. To tell you the truth, I've actually been pissed for many years about the lies that were being in just about every field of science. I think we, he meant, he left out the word told. Not to mention that there are these folks waging war on everyone alive at the same time. I sauntered into Flat Earth while digging into forbidden archaeology and the bastards who are hiding so much from us, namely the Smithsonian. So much deceit and lies, it's hard to keep up with these guys. I don't think he meant to rhyme that. And it all originates from a very small group of people. I do have many other colorful words for them. However, it seems that we're now all working for the truth at the same time, which is so wonderful to see happening at my age. Please tell everyone, keep a positive heart and don't worry. Water seeks its own level. If you have a chance, could you please send me your survival guide? I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to say. And a last word from me, fear not. God the Father is in charge. I stole that from Greg Hunter. Buy a little silver, buy a little gold, and soon these beasts will be hanging from the gallows pole. Question everything. God bless you all. That's from Bert Trim. Awesome. Thank you, Bert. And I did send him my survival guide. In fact, if anyone wants it, it's free. All you have to do is email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and just put survival guide somewhere in the title and I will shoot that off to you. And this one's called Spirit Level Shows Earth Not Spinning and Not a Ball from November 27th, 2017. Hello, Mark. Thank you for all your efforts. And with respect to the Flat Earth Truth, you have made a huge impact in the minds of countless truth seekers. I posted the following on one of your interview pages. And it was that spirit level thing. A very persuasive method that I've found for creating evidence to definitely demonstrate that the earth is not spinning and is not a ball is by using a spirit level, a free app that can be installed on a smartphone. There is a YouTube about using the spirit level. One, run the spirit level app. Two, place the phone on your kitchen countertop. Three, calibrate the level to the countertop. Four, observe the level for an hour or two. Once calibrated to your countertop, the bubble will be centered and the roll and pitch indicators will show 0.0. .0. If the Earth is a spinning ball in an hour or so, the spirit level will show a significant deviation from the calibration indicators. Guess what? My spirit level app never detected or indicated any deviation from the calibration level. This test strongly suggests to me that the Earth is not a spinning ball. Regards, Bruce Hatcher. Thank you, Bruce. Great stuff. This one's called All the Way from South Africa. Hi, Mark. I'm emailing you as I'm trying to keep my sanity in exploring and digging deeper into the Flat Earth belief. I find this to be very interesting, and the more I listen, the more I see, the more I am finally starting to think for myself. I have tried to start up a conversation on this topic with my husband and also other family members, as I guess I need them to agree, to agree with me, or just open this up for discussion. I am being laughed at. Ah, my baby, believe me when I tell you the Earth is a ball. It's a fact. And I am being made to feel stupid and totally ignorant. I don't know how I'm going to convince people just to have a peek, to listen, to hear, and to see it for themselves. I need to talk to someone about this, otherwise I'm going to lose my mind. I am a Christian, so it even makes more sense to me now. I wish I could talk to God about this, but in any case, he left, up his, left us his word with all the answers. Wish I had your guts. Thank you. And that's from Rindy Boschhoff out of South Africa. Awesome. And hopefully she has talked to somebody by now. I'm sure she has. Hopefully. Anyway, this one's called uh, another one from South Africa, which is weird. Completely different person. That's just two in a row. Literally, where are the odds that I get two in a row from, from South Africa? Go figure. This one's called Greetings from South Africa. 
Uh, hi, Mark. Greetings from sunny South Africa. Uh, December 31st, 2016. I searched the internet for more info on the Van Allen radiation belt, which a friend told me to look into. And what do you know? One page led to the other, and within minutes, my spinning ball earth shattered into a million pieces, and it fell flat. I've watched countless videos and read lots of material and swayed between wholly convinced to thinking I've gone completely crazy. I spent 16 years in the South African Defense Force, and signals was my field of expertise. I learned all about the satellites and even visited a few sites, with active satellite dishes moving as the satellite passed by in the heavens. So disillusioned, I guess, when I realized that the work I did actually comes down to a joke. Love your work. Love the videos. Just wanted to pop in and say hi. Blessings and peace. Esmari Van Niekirk. Awesome. And wife to Paul and my... Oh, cool. That's great. South Africa, go figure. And I, I shouldn't come down on them too hard. There's flat earthers down there, even though that's where Elon Musk is from, who I hate a great deal. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Movie. Mark, note that it was the show Bird was on, not the Long Eyes Chronosphere. What? It's the Long Jeans Chronosphere. Long Jeans is the watch company that sponsored the show. Long eyes chronosphere. That was really easy for that was really easy for you to verify. Yep. Yeah. Ron. Okay, so it wasn't it was the long okay, so I I should mention I so apparently he wants me to mention that the long long genes it's chronosphere, not chronoscope. Whatever. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> No one cares about that. The fact that Admiral Byrd was on it should be enough. But okay, I will remember it for next time. Hey, look, at least I, I got the long genes right. I Because even though it's pronounced long genes. Anyway. This one's called NASA and Antarctica. Hello, Mark. I've only recently become a flat earther. And through your videos, I have finally gotten logical answers to the illogical and inane stories that I've been fed throughout my life. The most recent experience I had was on a flight from Seattle to Reykjavik. The pilot announced that out of one, of one side of the plane, we could see the midnight sun appearing about level with the plane's windows. It was a beautiful bright orange with turquoise blue sky. However, when I looked out the windows on the opposite side of the plane, the sky was pitch black with a full moon and twinkling stars. As with the position of the sun, the moon was level with the plane windows. I couldn't figure out at the time how this could be possible with the Earth being a globe. A year later, I discovered your videos, and it all makes sense. Thank you for having the courage to stand by this conviction. I want to share a video with you if you haven't already seen it. I've been aware for some time of the military operations in Antarctica, but now viewing the information in this video from a flat Earth perspective, it becomes even more chilling. No pun intended. Including included in this video is information that ties in NASA, the JFK assassination, William Buckley, and the beginnings of the New World Order. Perhaps you can share this information with your subscribers and how it all ties in with the Flat Earth. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Cheryl McNulty. Cool. I'll check it out. This one's called Flat Earth Truther Need to Talk. Mr. Sergeant, I am sure you are very busy. You have many videos to watch, lots of information to absorb. Dare I say, the gravity of it all is a lot. I see what you did there. I am 33 years old. I do not even know how to begin from here. When I was a kid, my dad taught me a few things. The one I remember best is that if someone makes an absurd claim that upsets the room, there is a reason, and it is probably true. Why would they say such a thing? To completely make up the story claims allegations, why would someone do that? He also taught me that if you want to know if someone is lying, pay attention to their story. If it changes at all in any way, they are lying. If they refuse or to claim the inability to provide proof, they are telling the truth. Hmm. That's how the police work. If you ever wonder in a police show why they keep it, so you, you see the, the people in the interrogation room, it's like, all right, let's go over it again. You've already asked me this question 20 times. They're, they're asking not because they didn't get the details. It's because they're looking to see if the details change. Because if it does change, well, then you're lying. The truth never changes. I mean, the truth may vary a little bit. You may get a little, a few more details, but lies tend to, uh, the details change quite a bit. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. The short. I believe for years that 9-11 was an act of domestic and government sanctioned terrorism. There's too much evidence to support the fact for me to deny it. This frightens me. 
I had to start researching it because I wanted to debunk it. I love science. Stars, galaxies, Saturn, the moon, it's all fake. We never went to the moon. There is no Cassini spacecraft that crash landed into Saturn to preserve the pristine nature of her moons. The Earth is flat, period. It is true. I have always believed in evolution. It is false. I believe creation plays a large hand in who we are, why we're here, and where we're from. God, Osiris, Jesus, Set, Hell, Heaven, Dwat? I have no idea if these things exist, or if it is all merely a part of our natural human psyche that makes us wonder and awe, to give us a natural reason to want to live and exist. Can we talk? How do I find flat earthers near me to talk and learn with or from? That's from Jack Souter. And he's actually in the Washington area code, so I will send him some links to some of the meetups around here. That's great. This one's called Just Two Questions. Hi, Mr. Sergeant. I have just watched 12 Clues videos and been amazed. Some things I've questioned for years are being explained. Thank you for your all your efforts. I have two questions. If they are answered in a video or on your side, could you please direct me? One, I don't understand the landmass portion of Antarctica. Weren't the same islands reached by sailing off the coast of South America and Australia? I don't understand how this works with a flat earth model. I spent time in Australia and New Zealand and then read all about Shackleton and Bird for a geography class. I taught. Two, have you explained the cycles of the moon? Thank you for your endeavors, Callie Curtis. And yeah, when it comes to Antarctica, there's a lot we don't know about that continent. Mostly because of the 1959 Antarctic Treaty. That place is locked down tight. Nobody owns it. Uh, the average person, yes, you can spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars and go down there and have your picture taken with penguins, but no corporation on it from any country is allowed to sit up there. So there's a big mystery that's going on in Antarctica. As far as the cycles of the moon, what well, we can do cycles now in a planetarium. For me, this it's remember it's for me it's not just flat. It is enclosed. It's an enclosed pressurized system. It's a planetarium. It's a terrarium. It's an amusement park ride. It's a giant building. And if you've ever been to a planetarium, and you really should go, there's some out there still. We can we can do cycles of the moon in a planetarium right now. So there you have it. This one's called Truth Seeker. Mark, I really enjoy your easy, natural way of expressing the flat earth. Your honesty is not placing blame or naming names is refreshing. I'm a truth seeker from way back, cutting my teeth in the 60s by attending Woodstock. Holy smokes. Uh, then reading None Dare Call It Conspiracy, both mind and eye openers. I found God, or maybe he found me, causing me to change my family traditions, my culture and religion. However, like you and Patricia, I'm very open to people being of whatever faith or no faith when it comes to our earth. I may believe in worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of my own conscious. Conscious? But conscience. Conscience. Whatever. Uh, but I allow all men the same privilege let them worship how where or what they may i believe in all truth from whatever source it may come for truth will prevail and the truth will endure no man's faith no man's religion and no religious organization in this world can ever rise above the truth that was from jf smith in any case i just want to thank you for carrying the torch of truth in such a fair and non-judgmental way May your God continue to guide and inspire you with discernment as you study the flat earth and the people who live upon it. Peace, love, and blessings, Charlie. Oh, he's Mormon. Go figure. Uh, P.S. Please check out the movie The Island from 2005. Oh, absolutely. The Island's a great one. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you guys haven't checked it out, it was one of those lost gems, I think, from 2005, where they were breeding clones inside a giant enclosed world, and they didn't know any better. They they, they believed the world that was presented to them. It was kind of like an evil version of the Truman Show. Very, very interesting. Uh, I believe Scarlett Johansson was in it, as well as, uh, oh boy, I uh, uh, can't remember his name. Crap, the guy that played Obi-Wan in the new Star Wars movies. Anyway, I, I'm not going to look it up now. Sorry. To, I, I Probably will come to me later. This one, Ewan McGregor, there it is. Didn't even look it up. Thank God my memory is not shot. This one's called Joe Rogan and God. Uh, Mark, they're hiding God from us. During my most epic moments of UFC fights, Joe Rogan used to yell out, oh my God. UFC was sold to WME IMG recently. Rogan has since removed that phrase from his vocabulary. During amazing moments of the best UFC fights, he now says, oh my goodness. 
It sounds so forced and so fake. It's just total BS. By the way, great work, sir. Uh, and I, I see where he's going with this. Because can you use the Lord's name in vain if you truly know, if you truly believe that there, or you know that there is a God up there? Or some advanced power. I, I, I don't know if using the Lord's name in vain is actually that great of a you know, strike against you. I've never seen anybody get hit by lightning saying that. But oh, anyway, interesting though. Again, the hive mind of the internet misses nothing. This one's called... What? Please help me find San Diego Flat Earthers. Hmm, good one. Hi, Mark. My name is Scott, and I've been into Flat Earth for over a year now, and I live in San Diego. I have never been able to talk to anyone about the Flat Earth, and it's honestly getting a little rough. I just wanted to talk about it with anyone that won't jump down my throat and call me retarded and say Flat Earth is debunked because NASA exists. As you know, Flat Earth starts to consume you in a way, and I want to be able to tell everyone about it. But as you know, and like you say, the first rule of Flat Earth is don't talk about the Flat Earth. I was just wondering if you knew some good people I could link up with in San Diego area. I have looked for local Flat Earth meetups, and a lot of the people also meet up for swingers nights. What? <laughs> And a slew of other weird crap. I know this because it shows you other meetups they sing on too. So maybe not the best people to talk with. I don't know. I mean, swingers may not be that bad. I, I don't know a lot of them. Anyways, just a flat earther in San Diego looking to talk flat earth. I know you're like the George Clooney of flat earth. Oh boy, don't, don't do that. And maybe a bit hard to get in touch with, but what the hell. God has a funny way of working his magic. I hope you have a great rest of the night and I'll be tuning in to listen to your show. Hope to hear from you soon, Scott. And you know what? I don't think we've done a San Diego Flat Earth meetup yet. So if there's anybody down in San Diego that wants to do one, just freaking call a restaurant and, and get this thing started. Just saying. All right, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Go figure. Hi, Mark. Just heard you on the YouTube on on the YouTube with Rob Skiba. After being introduced to Flat Earth a few months ago, I'm finding it difficult to justify my inherent belief in the global in the global. After watching a few more videos of Eric Dubé, can you please suggest any other people to follow online societies, clubs I can join? As I'm feeling very alone in my research, as no one shares my interest in this. Keep up the good work. Best Jerry, an Irishman based in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, w there's a whole bunch of people in Flat Earth. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons and tons of people. You just got to look for them. Uh, just go join. There, If you go into YouTube and type in Flat Earth, there are just a slew, and set the filter to live, there are tons of Flat Earth live hangouts. Don't go into the troll hangouts, but there's a bunch of live hangouts that are out there every single day. So check those out when you get a chance. I, please, you know, there's there are tons. I'm sure he has by now. This one's called QAnon, alluding to Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. First time mailer, long time listener. Not sure if you've been following the 4chan QAnon thing. I haven't. But I had the notion that maybe this was an attempt at disclosure to the world about the world. I can see this as a way to, yes, ladder the general public into a place where they're ready to hear about the flat earth. Imagine if you are presented with undeniable proof that your politicians are defiling children and giving blood sacrifices to Moloch. Hearing that the earth may also be flat would seem almost expected. Probably wouldn't even bat an eyelash. Anywho, there's talk of Keyhole Program Company, which seems to be a reference to the original name for what became Google Earth. From what I've heard, I'm taking their word for it. The CIA is an investor in blah, blah, blah. But point being, he actually wrote blah, blah, blah. I wasn't skimming over it. Uh, was Google Earth hijacked because it could have exposed the true shape of the world if it had continued unimpeded? I believe I heard somewhere that it was originally based on high-altitude balloons, not necessarily satellites. There's some talk of Antarctica in there as well. I wonder if and when Google Earth was first mapping Antarctica, did it keep having issues and coming up with weird data, data that would indicate Antarctica was far larger than we originally thought. Oh, will you also send me your survival guide? even though I didn't put it in the subject line like I was supposed to. John from Vancouver, Washington. Yes, I will, John. And uh, good thing you actually mentioned that at the very end because I literally did not know. So that goes in the to-do pile. 
which I will get to, I promise. This one's called Interview with Pierce. Mark, hope it all is good. Just watch the opportunity you had with Pierce and the astronaut. He spelled it N-O-T. You did well considering. I was amazed at the level of composure and respect you presented, and while I am not convinced that the Earth is flat, I support the message and movement. This is primarily due to the level of deception the powers to be have demonstrated. Good work. I have a question. In your clue series, you state that you leave out the math so more or less the layman can understand what you're presenting. But isn't it the math that displays the round Earth? For example, when Venus transits the moon and the trigonometry that goes with that shows the distance of Venus as being much, much further than would need to be if it were on a flat plane. Many examples of the same effect. That is my primary hang-up. How can that be deceived? Please try and explain. Paul from Jupiter, Florida. Interesting, by the way, that he's actually from a town in Florida called Jupiter. And the message to Paul would be, the uh, yeah, you're going to have to throw a lot of the trigonometry out because, remember, Venus and Mars and Saturn and all the planets, they're, they're, the distances and the sizes of these things are told to you by NASA. Stick with the stuff that's on the ground, like 8 inches per mile squared. Try to find me the 8 inches per mile squared curvature somewhere on the ground. You will not be able to find it. And don't give me that left to right crap. Let's go forward and backwards over the horizon where the ships are supposedly disappearing. You cannot find it. Uh, I'm not kidding you when I say that you would, if it wasn't for the atmosphere on this world, you would be able to see a lot, lot farther because in a vacuum, there's nothing impeding your sight. Uh, but we're only breathing about 20% oxygen. It's it's four, it's 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. So it's four to one nitrogen, oxygen. I know there's some trace gases in there, but who cares? Uh, if you took out the trace gases, we'd be just fine. So that's what I would look at first. So yeah, you're going to have to throw out the trigonometry of all the all the planets that, that NASA talks to you about. And the interview he was talking about was Piers Morgan on Good Morning UK. Good Morning Britain? Good Morning Britain, which I did, which is the, the British version of Good Morning America, where they had me on against Terry Virts, and, I'm not, and they blocked it. I'm not allowed to put it on my channel. So you actually have to go to the BBC to Good Morning Britain and watch it on their channel if it's in the archives. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. I tried it. I even tried re reversing it, turning it into a mirror image so the letters are backwards. Wouldn't let me do it, which is fine. Right? It's their stuff. Okay, this one's called same sort of thing. TV interview with astronaut. Uh, and you, by the way, you can look up the astronaut that I was uh, talking to. And by the way, he did have the advantage because one, he was on stage with them. He was actually sitting next to them. I was coming in through a Skype connection. Uh, he was allowed to see me on a monitor. I was not allowed to see anybody. I could only hear them. Thank God I am used to dealing with people on a, on a voice only scenario when I'm doing interviews. Uh, it's not the first time this ever happened to me. So, and, and I want to be respectful. Look, if I'm going to get tossed off of something, be very clear about this. If I'm going to be tossed off of something, it's not going to be remotely because that's just one click of a button and they can accidentally make us, oh, well, lost Mark. Don't know what happened to him. You know, you can make up anything you wanted to. If I'm going to get thrown off, I'm going to be on stage. So anyone that says, oh, you should have absolutely attacked him with everything you had. No, 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 no. No, I was trying to make a nice impression for the producers that are out there. It's like, look, Mark's a nice guy. He's respectful. He's not going to be completely uncontrollable when he's when he's on. So Terry and I will meet again. I guarantee it. Anyway, he goes, Mark, saw you on the England TV interview with that astronaut. Seems they only wanted you as window dressing. Uh, what did they give you? Maybe 45 seconds of airtime. And of course, they just had a copy of an England photoshopped photo from all places, the fake ISS. Man, did they have gall. They just wasted your time. Like you said, just go to the beach. But no, they won't. They might find the truth. Then what? Keep pumping out the videos. Okay, that's from Kenny Nickel. His last name's actually Nickel. Moving on. This one's called Idea to Copy NASA. Hi, Mark. Have you ever considered using some of your experts to reproduce a NASA ISS video? You could use that CGI animation survey expert. If you were able to make it as good or better as NASA's, I think you could, it could really help to wake up people to the fraud. Thanks. Love the show, Jason. Yeah, I mean, we're already making little parody videos of stuff just using standard I, interior ISS backdrops. We could, we could do it in two seconds. It is not hard to create a, a, an ISS background. Uh, more, I suppose more people should do it. I don't know if it would prove anything. 
I, look, a anything can be faked right now when it comes to video. If you have any doubts on that, look at the movie Gravity. Gravity with the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney was better than real life in 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 most cases. I mean, the footage was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And you could have, if you would have taken the actors, the the brand name actors out of there, you could have interspliced that with any of the NASA footage, and it still would have looked out of place because it was too clear, actually. Uh, this one's called, How Long Do Astronauts Stay on the ISS? Greetings from sunny Denver, Colorado. Google answer to that question. A, the ISS missions, called expeditions, usually last about six months. There are three to six crew members on board at all times. I've been listening to you for a while now. Great stuff. As I understand it, the astronauts go through very rigorous training here on Earth. Fine. I also understand there can be anywhere from three to ten people on board. Good enough. Really? Ten people? Really? It takes two plus pilots to fly just about any major airliner, and for the most part, they fly themselves. The ISS can be operated by three astronauts, three people. There isn't a ride at Disney that can be operated with as little as three people. Good point. That being said, there is just no way. Well, you know, it's a small world, I think, could be operated with three people. I mean, just the person to run it, and then maybe like the people to like escort him on and off, eh, it'd still be three people. That being said, there is no way that within three months, the overlap time, you could teach the new astronauts the vast amount of info needed to keep that trash can from spiraling back to Earth as a fireball, all while keeping up on maintenance, jumping around in a monkey suit while playing guitar and conducting complicated, and I remind you, necessary while highly lucrative experiments. We're talking about what would be the most specialized flying aircraft living quarters science lab ever built, and they have three months to figure it all out, only to teach a new group of space cowboys the routine. You've seen the pictures. The ISS is just rat's nest of cables, wires, hoses, levers, buttons, and blinking lights that all should serve a critical function for their survival. Three months to figure out what it all does, and that's just the crap on the inside. Give me a break. Fake, all caps, Wade. P.S. Keep up the good work. I will, Wade. I will keep the fight going. Take it to him for as long as I can. This one's called Hi to the Dome. Hi, Mark. Been listening to the technical interviews. Wonderful stuff. Thanks for doing it. Had a light bulb moment from listening. It's really easy to get the height. We know Polaris is 90 degrees. Polaris is 90 degrees from the pole. So from any spot on the Earth, simply get the angle of deviation, the ground distance from the pole, and do a bit of trig. Voila. P.S. The last missile launch by the North Koreans. I find it really hard to believe they went up 4,000 miles. Something about NASA, uh, the Orion Project, and radiation. F more fear tactics. Yeah, they, yeah. N yeah, I had no chance in hell that the Koreans ever launch anything up 4,000 miles. Cheers, and that's from Ike Gusht, field service mechanic out of Aldergrove, British Columbia. Awesome. I don't know exactly where that is, but I knew where British Columbia is, but I don't know where Aldergrove is. That's great. This one's called, <clears throat> excuse me. Flat Earth Research. Hello, Mark. I have just seen the long documentary on YouTube about Flat Earth Theory, which you made. First, I want to give you big thanks for such a great video and research. I am aware that doing this kind of thing takes hours and hours of work, so respect. Smiley face. I'm not saying that I believe everything about this theory, but I also don't say that I believe everything about the school theory. I'm simply free mind. Also trying to get the whole picture and understand this better, but because I'm personally not very good with computers and I don't have a lot of time and energy to do some deeper research of my own, I would like to show you this video, which I have found in between hundreds of others. It's called Flat Earth and NASA Hoax Debunk Slam Dunk. And he goes, this video is not saying that the Earth is flat, but the opposite way around. And I only wanted to share it with you because you look like very enthusiastic, true seeker. So this video could help you you get other perception too and maybe go even deeper in your research. Thanks a lot. I wish you happy day. <laughs> That's from Otto Kern. I'm guessing that Otto is not from here originally. That's really cool. This one's called what? Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I just started reading your book and I've got to page 16 and your email address. I believed in the flat earth for 18 months and just thought I'd get in touch. I also saw you being interviewed by Pierce Morgan 
And whilst you hopefully got some exposure on the subject, the mainstream media are not just going to give you fair opportunity to put your say forward. Good point. Is there... If there is more that can be done to expose the flake, f- flake, fake global earth theory, I would love to get involved. If you are ever in the UK, do give me a shout. Regards and keep up the good work. Ashley Atwood. Right on. Thank you, Ashley. Always nice to hear. This one's called Flat Earth Dome. Hi, Mark. What do you think about the North Korean missile, which they say reached an altitude of 2,800 miles? Well, I'd say that somebody else said it was 4,000 miles. And as the grapevine goes, I have no idea. Uh, This shook my belief in the flat earth, uh, little as it must have got through the dome. Please let me know your thoughts, Paul, from Amber Lodge Nursing Home. Okay, Paul, hopefully you're listening here. Look, if you're believing a story, there's, there's levels to this. If you're believing any story that the North Koreans release at all, That's saying something. But if you believe a fake North Korean story that was probably released and filtered through the United States media or the world media, uh, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, Did they launch a rocket? Yeah, maybe. Maybe they launched a rocket. Maybe they didn't. It could could have been a completely fake story. Just remember, they're trying to drum up fears of the North Koreans. Why? I have no idea. I don't think. Do they even have a navy? Do they have anything? I mean, what what sort of war? They keep talking, oh, United States and North Korea are going to go to war. Really? Why? What, what are you going to do? They, they, you'd, have to, you'd have to stage something. You'd have to stage a West Coast attack from them. They'd have to, like, or we do another Pearl Harbor where they launch a missile and take out part of Hawaii or Kauai, hopefully one of the crappy islands. Okay, this one's called Thankful. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to thank you for all your hard work. You have helped me help to bring me and my house into a closer relationship with our Savior, Jesus Yeshua, through the Flat Earth Revelation. All the way from South Africa, please send Survival Guide. Stay flat. Okay, guys, if you're going to want, if you want the Survival Guide, put it in the title, so then you don't have to wait, in this case, over a month. Yeah, a month. Uh, Stay flat, and feel free to contact me if you ever come visit us, Steve Hollander. All right, so I gotta take his. I gotta put his into the file. The other survival guide stuff. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, this one's called Morning Show Interview. Hi, Mark. I wanted to commend you on your efforts on your recent interview with the British Morning Show. I did not like the way they treated you or the way they cut you off at the end. Now well, they didn't really cut me off. I don't think they did anyway. That astronaut was a compulsive liar with his space stories and fake CGI picture book. Great job, my friend. Keep it up, Michael. P.S. I was able to contact Ross Fitzgerald and purchased a coin set. Oh, lanyard and badge. Thanks. Oh, cool. I'm glad. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't even know that was his name. Ross, the guy that came up with the flat earth coin sets going 2015, 2016, 2017. I don't think he's got one for 2018 yet. So that's awesome. This one's called F.E. Hey, Mark, just wanted to say thank you for sharing your knowledge. I have been a flat earther for almost two years. I am sure you hear this a lot, but Flat Earth Clues opened my eyes much further than I could have ever imagined. I rewatch it occasionally when I have the time, and it still fascinates me. Outer space and science never made sense to me. I just always thought it was above my understanding. Now that I possess the understanding, I get why it never makes sense. Thank you for all you do. God bless. Angie. Aw, that's nice. Thank you, Angie. This one's called... Oh, boy. Okay, it's one paragraph. Hopefully there's some punctuation in it. I think there is. I think we're, we'll be okay. Uh, it's called To the George Clooney of Flat Earth. Not spam. Promise not spam. Please read. All right. I'll read it. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hopefully this finds you. And if it does find you, it finds you well, just like the letter finds read well at the end of Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Movie references, great. Anyway, I'm writing to you, as I'm sure you get a lot of this kind, uh, to share my experience through this whole Flat Earth thing and also in hopes to get in touch with some other like-minded people down here in San Diego. No, another San Diego guy. I have been into Flat Earth for over a year now, and the feelings I get it from it are all over the board. At one end, I get this calm, relaxed feeling where for the first time in a long time, I feel there's a positive direction that we, the people, can focus on. Maybe this is because people like you because of people like you. I feel there is a positive direction that we, the people, can focus on. Wait, I think I just looped around. Sorry. When you don't have paragraph breaks, it kind of throws me. I found my way back to God. I have always followed my gut, and people that know me will tell you how loyal I am to that concept. Following a gut feeling to me is just that, a feeling. I can 
feel it inside of me when something is right or something is wrong. My body physically feels and understand whatever frequency that gut feeling is on. And when it comes to flat earth, that feeling is overwhelming. My body screams that it is the right way to think. And so like always, I've listened and naturally at first, it led me to Eric and then to onto the YouTube binge we all love going on and then to you. Out of all the videos I've watched, and as you know, it's a lot. What you say resonates the most most with me, and it's almost every time I listen to a radio show or a clues or an interview, I hear something else that hits pretty deep. These types of experiences I'm experiencing probably aren't that common, so when they keep happening, I pay attention. But like everything, there is another side to it, and that is I can't share these experiences with anyone. If I do, I'm looked at like a complete idiot who has no clue what I'm talking about because, duh, NASA exists. So if there's any way you could shoot me back an email or give someone else, you might know my email address that lives in the San Diego area, that would be great. I'm very into this and I'm passionate about it and would love to get involved and help out in any way possible. Maybe there is someone else out there that knows a little bit less than me and I can talk with them and share my experience or vice versa. Just anything would be great. If you read this on air, I appreciate all you've done for the Fly Earth community and for the things you have helped shift into my life that you've had no clue, <laughs> funny, that you have no clue you have done. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Scott from and Sanitas, California. That's me drinking water. Not alcohol, not wine. A little too early for wine. I don't even know if I'll have wine tonight. Okay, this one's called Couple Flat Earth Questions from Dexter. I love you, Mark. Got a couple questions for you. What, one, what's your personal take from your research on what's the North Pole and the land around there? North Pole is the center of the map. In my opinion, it's the center of the AE map, the closest we've got. And there could be something really weird up there uh, because Admiral Byrd found, supposedly found some weird stuff in 1926. And Charles Lindbergh supposedly found some stuff after uh, Admiral Byrd did. So that's my initial take on it. Two, any favorite theories on what causes the tides? Yeah, molecular magnetism. I think it's controlled down below. I don't think the moon controls the tides at all. They may be synced up with the moon, the, the magnetism waves, but it doesn't mean the moon's doing it. Three, do you think that anything can be put into orbit as our stars are? Eh, no. I know that other people do, but I don't. I, I think that you can put stuff up there, but they have to, it has to be held up from uh, by um, high-altitude balloons. If you're going to hang something up there. Four, has a network of people across the Earth tracked in one night the path of the ISS confirming its nonstop flight or orbit? Uh, some people have tried to track it. I think there's something flying up there that could be... I mean, it, there's something flying up there. Yeah, absolutely, sure. You know, you, you can look it up in ISS tracker and you'll see it flying over your city most of the time, although I've seen it do some weird stuff in Australia. But uh, the, are there people on it? No. No, I mean, just because you see an image up there doesn't mean there's people on it. I mean, if we projected an image of a Star Destroyer up there, does that mean that Darth Vader's flying above us? No, it just means it's an image. Number five, what are the craters on the moon, if not impacts? They're just decorations because all the craters came in from 90 degree angles. And that statistically would be really unlikely that you would have these perfectly round craters. Where are all the skid craters? Because remember, the craters are coming in. They're perfect circles, like they're being shot from a 90 degree angle. They're coming in perpendicular to the surface. And that shouldn't be the case. And they're all, and perpendicular even from uh, the side that, that we're facing, that's facing us. Yeah, I know you could say, well, it, was, it wasn't facing, the side that was facing the earth now probably wasn't when the craters were made. I was going, well, that's awfully convenient. No, they're just decorations. I don't see gouges, scrapes, or skid marks. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what I said. Hope to hear from you in writing or read aloud on your show. You're the best. Dexter. Very welcome, Dexter. Moving on. This one's called Refrigeration, Vacuum, and Electrolysis. Mark, the ISS is reported to be cooled with ammonia. I have 35 years in refrigeration, and I can tell you the two types of refrigeration for ammonia being mechanical and absorption, neither would work. Mechanical would require 100 horsepower to create the refrigeration they would need. Absorption uses ammonia, hydrogen, and water, which in parts of the cycle become aqua ammonia, meaning dilute 
dilute, dilute. And they have had an ammonia leak a while back that would rule out absorption as it is a sealed, <clears throat> excuse me, balanced system that's critical of balance or the chemicals used. The electrolysis to create oxygen requires an electrolytic, which such as salts or other chemicals that lowers the resistive conductance. These are some of these words I've never used in my life. In the water, also low DC voltages are used typically 12 volts. However, very high amperage in the 30 to 40 amp range for a system that's that size, they would need to be huge, demanding steady 100 to 200 amps and likely more. And in volumes of water and steady cleaning and maintenance as the containing and reacting metal is stainless steel to lower corrosion. However, one system wouldn't work without a twin backup. The near perfect vacuum of space and the pressure in their suits, assuming close to the earth at sea level of one atmosphere or 14.7 PSI, would blow up the instant they broke the seal on the door to space. Uh, that's from AK. Awesome. Cool. Good to know. Good, good tips. Moving on. This one's called Curious. Mark. Good evening or good night, I guess at this point. So my name is William and I stumbled across, excuse me, your video and some of the things you said actually when I started to verify them, it was exactly like you presented them like the NASA footage or Robert Burr's story and I'm a little in shock. So I just, I'm just intrigued at this point. The flight pattern thing makes absolute sense as you explained it to which really rocked my mind. So I wanted to ask what other info do you have on the subject? I'm sure with your extensive research you have done, you didn't share everything. And I'm guessing you have even more concrete evidence to verify your statement as well. And well, that's just the person I am. Once I find something that piques my interest, I just can't stop till I know it all. So can you share any other stuff with me? Because I'm really struggling to wrap my head around the whole thing, like testing the nukes. What was the reason or purpose of it? What did they find? Or what were they testing? So many for. What's past the border? If we are flat, then that also means we are standing still and everything else is moving away from us or around us. What about the back black matter theory? If we are flat, then what is below us and how deep does it go? Sorry for butchering you. Butchering you? <laughs> It meant bothering, but the spell checker made, said butchering you. With so many questions, like I said, or maybe he meant butchering, uh, what you're saying makes sense, but I'm struggling and grasping at it all. Respectfully, William. And William, I'm sure, is on, he's continuing his journey and will come out the other side a, a better person with greater understanding. <laughs> I hope. Or, he, or that or he went nuts. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Dear Mr. Sergeant, I have a few questions about the Flat Earth Theory I was hoping you could answer. First, what is on the other side of the Earth or the bottom if all the continents are on one side? Second, what is the edge of the Earth and how can a flat structure like the Earth avoid crumbling over time? Uh, let's see. What's on the other side of the Earth bottom? I'm going to say Swiss cheese because uh, I don't know. I mean, you can only dig down eight miles. Second, what is the edge of the Earth and how far... Because I no no it's not a it's not a, a flat Earth floating in space it's part of an enclosed structure. Where that enclosed structure is, anybody knows. Additionally, I am confused as to how massive weather patterns seemingly caused by the convection currents can occur if the Earth is flat. Why not? Also, if the Earth is flat, why do mid-ocean ridges have switching polarity, as this implies that the South Pole has a distinct polarity, which would not if it was surrounded the entire Earth? Really? Tell me, tell me where the South Pole flips over the compass, takes, takes priority over the, the compass. Everybody I've ever talked to said the North Pole dominates the compass, no matter how far you go. Also, do other planets exist in this flat Earth model? No. Only in lights on, only in, in in the fact that you can see them in the sky, but that's it. No different than if you shine a flashlight on your ceiling. You're not going to be able to land on that flashlight. You can say the flat, the beam on the ceiling is anything you want, but you're, it's not a it's not a star. I hope you have time to address these questions. This is not meant as a hostile email. I'm genuinely genuinely curious. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And that's from Liz. Thank you, Liz. 
This one's called Geocentric Model. Hey, Mark, I'm a believer, but I have a few questions. How do you account for the areas in Alaska and other parts of the Northern Hemisphere that experience long periods of sunlight, sometimes lasting for weeks or months? Uh, no, actually, the, the North Pole w works just fine. It's the South Pole we have problems with. The South Pole with the Antarctic sun, the 24-hour sun, that's where it gets tricky. There's something else going on down there, but the, the North Pole, that's perfect. It's, that's just the sun moving in closer and doing a, a tighter circle around the North Pole, which is the center of this map. Uh, let's see here. What happens to the sun? It rises in the east and sets in the west. But while it is night in some places, it is broad daylight in others. And once it has crossed the world, where does it go? I don't understand. How does it reset? Thank you. That's from Jackson. Well, Jackson's got a ways to go. Hopefully he has looked. But if you guys want to look it up, just type in um, Flat Earth Sun and you'll see a whole bunch of, of wonderful movies and images showing that the sun is just this tiny object which just goes off into the distance and gets picked up by atmospheric distortion or atmospheric lensing or fat and morgana and never seen again. Remember, you got, you got to unlearn everything and relearn everything. And then one of the other big things is the sun is not this giant fiery ball. It's this tiny little light. It just flies over us. It's not very big. This one's called Question from a Ross and Carrie listener. Oh, yeah, because I did that show with Ross and Carrie. Uh, it was a it was a good interview, I think, and they actually asked her some tough questions. So uh, you know, let's get to it. Hi, Mark. I heard you on Oh No, Ross and Carrie. You seem like a really fun, witty guy. I was wondering if you'd answer a question I had. If the Earth was flat, what is the benefit to them in leading us all to believe it's a globe? Why not just say, Oh, we found out, but the Earth is flat? Well, you really should watch the clues because you have not. If you if you actually ask me that question, I know this would have many implications. Well, you're answering it yourself on on the the on the validity of current science, but why deceive the majority of humanity? Thank you for your time, Sarah. And yeah, Sarah, you you you, you answered your own question. That is, look, it it implies many implications. That's kind of redundant, isn't it? It, it? There's too many things, too many shockwaves that would go through our system that the powers that be would not take chances for. Anyway, she says, P.S. Is there anywhere I can hear more about your time and views in the gaming industry? I'm a huge fan of gaming as well as an albeit currently laid off programmer. Uh, and yes, I actually did email her about some of my stuff in the gaming. I'm, I'm old school gaming though. Back in the day, I mean, mid 90s, when it was when I got in, oh, so great to get into gaming back then. It was everything was new, and I mean, you literally had shops that had like two or three people. You know, back when ID started up and Bungie started up, when they were they weren't even making stuff like Mara or like um, Halo. They were they started out as a Mac developer, and made a little game, a little first person shooter called uh, Marathon, which was an outstanding game. So anyway. I don't want to get off on that too much. we got got time for a couple more emails. Let's end on a fun one if we can. This one's called No Subject. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I have a question. Who do you believe created the Earth? Uh, a couple developer friends of mine uh, that I hang out with. They, they actually created it. I'm just kind of a beta tester. Next one. Is Flat Earth a flat holographic simulation? Okay. Mark, the link below is from the Overwatch project on YouTube. Groundbreaking material here, folks. Proving that the Earth is not a globe, it is the first step, and you have done all done that admirably. Now it's time to figure out what the place is and how to keep them from re keep from returning or to at least have the choice. This guy and the multitudes of links he shares will take you down the path. We all know that something is simply not right here. This guy ventures into why and into what is wrong with it, where we are, and how to get the hell out. I'm not saying that this realm doesn't have something to offer. I'm saying that this is a simulation. I want to know what's real. Well, what is real? To be honest. Would anyone know if you went to another dimension that was outside of this one? And they said, oh, no, this is the real dimension, not the one you were in. How would you know? Uh, the comment below is the video link explains briefly what he's saying. He has over 100 videos out and so much more. This is the next step for Flat Earthers, folks. Proving this place is not a globe is a done deal for many. So now what WTF is this place, eh? Please give this info a chance. You won't regret it. Sincere regards, Todd, the easy writer. And yeah, he gives a couple links. So cool. Let's see if we can end on a fun one. Uh, let's see. Urgent. Must see this pic. NASA forgot to close a window on the ISS. You must share this video talk uh, video talk about it on upload soon. Can you notice the open window in the pic? 
And no, I don't, unless you're... The, I mean, the one with the drapes, uh, that looks kind of like it's Photoshop. See, if I can't tell, literally in the first five seconds or ten seconds, nobody else is going to either. I'm pretty good about this stuff. Of course, while these guys are wearing sunglasses up there is a whole nother... I hate astronauts. Eh, that's not a good enough one. Let's see if we can find one more. Flat Earth Clues, part eight. Let's do this one. We'll end on this one. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm an Australian and a devout flat earther. I was awoken a while ago by something that took took, took my interest. And the further I went down the rabbit hole, the more I was taken. I have been working on God and distances and flight times from my city of Brisbane on the East Coast, and nothing could make more sense. I'm ridiculed and laughed at by my peers. However, no mind. It's you, me, and all the ones who have been given this special third eye that will endure. I'm watching your series and the dialogue on part eight. At the end, it had me in tears. You struck a chord, brother, loud and clear. Can I ask you one question? Is this the work of God or a supreme race? What should or who, who should we have faith in? Because this plane is clearly the work of a higher power. Can you tell me what I should look for in this respect? Before this, when I was still a victim of indoctrination, I was against God. But this, is this his work, do you think? Please get back to me, my friend. A reply would be regarded in great respect. Kindest regards, Chris Owen. And uh, yeah, let's let's end on this one. Uh, one, uh, Clue 8 was probably my favorite because it was kind of a, a motivational video for everyone out there that was feeling... Uh, that, that Flat Earth was, was sinking them into a claustrophobic state. Uh, and it was trying to in, reinforce to people that everyone's important and the, the reason why you're suffering is because it was, you know, it was meant to be and you, you're, you're part of a, a greater picture here. Uh, but when it comes to God and, and uh, you know, that you, did, did God make this thing? Uh, at the very least, Flat Earth proves that we are closer to a god than ever before. It is very, very difficult to be an atheist in Flat Earth. Uh, if you aren't being brought back to spirituality like I was after getting into the Flat Earth, and I'm not going to pick a particular spirituality because I think they, they all have merit, uh, then you know I, I don't have much hope for you. But anyway, thank you for everyone that emailed to me so far. I, try, I will try to read them in the order they are received, uh, and I still have a whole bunch more to go. Uh, but until next time, guys, and enjoy the holidays, stay flat.